looms and a deal doesn't look close at all. How will our national parks be impacted if lawmakers can't decide on a spending bill? How this decision could put a damper on the plans of visitors. But look, a government shutdown doesn't solve the problem. A government shutdown costs the taxpayers billions of dollars. Plus, weighing in, we reach out to our Montana delegation where they have plenty to say about the shutdown. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Friday on the 430 News. I'm Andrea Lutz. Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy failed to reach a vote today, meaning a government shutdown inches closer. Now, the government will face a shutdown if a funding bill is not passed by Saturday. And if that happens, many federal workers will stop getting their paychecks. But essential employees to public safety, things like air traffic controllers and law enforcement would still have to report to work. Other federal jobs would be furloughed. One big question mark is what will happen at our national parks? Well, we just learned that national parks will remain open at least in through Sunday. The Department of Interior says most of the park sites across the country will close starting on Monday. However, the status of both Yellowstone and Glacier are still uncertain. Both parks tell us they're working on a contingency plan. Utah and Arizona have both announced they plan to fund their national parks through the shutdown to keep them open with the expectation the states will be in re reimbursed. In Arizona, state lottery funds will be used to keep Grand Canyon National Park open. As the budget negotiations continue, the four members of Montana's congressional delegation are divided on the best way to move forward. Our Jonathan and Barian spoke to each of them about the impasse and how it can be resolved and the growing possibility of a government shutdown. Congressman Matt Rosendale has been among the staunchest critics of any possible continuing resolution to temporarily extend government funding while negotiations continue. He says the House should be focusing on passing its 12 main appropriations bills. Rosendale believes the impact of a shutdown would be limited as long as it remains short. So we have a little bit of a window from now until the middle of October before the financial impact truly starts hitting. And by that time, I do believe we certainly have the ability to get these appropriation bills considered, amended, passed over to the Senate and then and then up to the president's desk. Congressman Ryan Zinke sits on the House Appropriations Committee. He says the House has put together the most conservative budget bills in years, and he thinks Republicans need to stick together and advance the bills before them. But he said he's concerned about a shutdown, especially if military members start missing paychecks. So we got to get all these through. Uh, if if we pa if we do our job, the appropriations is there enough time to send it? The Senate sign it? Probably not. And then we would need some vehicle while things are being being done. The appropriations bills coming from the House may face a tough road in the Senate, which has proposed its own short-term continuing resolution. Senator John Tester, Montana's lone Democrat in Congress, is backing that measure. He says the House should find a bipartisan solution to avoid the threat of a shutdown. There's a potential that the government could shut down for a day or two. Um, and look, that's that's not good business, but it's not the end of the world. You get a shutdown any longer than that, it starts having real negative effects on, on businesses and families and, and our credibility in the world as a democracy. Senator Steve Daines agreed Thursday that the impacts of a shutdown would be significant, but he said he saw one potential path to avoiding that situation, passing a short-term funding extension tied with an agreement for the Biden administration to step up border enforcement. I think a something, if we can get Joe Biden and the Senate Democrats to agree on, on securing the southern border, that would stand a chance to get passed in the U.S. House. I think that's probably our best uh, path forward at this moment. But look, a government shutdown doesn't solve the problem. A government shutdown costs the taxpayers billions of dollars. A spokesperson for Governor Greg Gianforte's office said this week that his budget team is working with state agencies to be prepared in case there is a federal shutdown. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News.
On this Friday, we've had a nice mix of high clouds and sunshine for at least the eastern half of the state. We've had some showers in western Montana. What do I have my eyes on for this upcoming weekend? Well, we do have warmer than average weather, but also breezier weather coming. Clouds and isolated rain showers on Sunday, and they'll be marching across the state from west to east as we progress through Sunday into the early part of next week with more chances for some valley rain, some high elevation snow, and gusty wind. Of a complete seven day forecast in just a few minutes. California Senator Dianne Feinstein, who shattered glass ceilings during her more than three decades in the U.S. Senate, has died at the age of 90. Feinstein cast her last vote in the Senate late Thursday morning, according to Senate records. And according to a statement by her chief of staff, James Sauls, she died at her Washington, D.C. home Thursday night. The Department of Veterans Affairs has released which services will be impacted if the government shutdown happens on October 1st and which ones will remain in operation. Health care is not impacted. VA medical centers, outpatient clinics and VA centers will stay open. Benefits will continue to be processed, including pension, education and housing benefits. VA contact centers and the Veterans Crisis Line will operate 24 hours a day. And burials at VA National Cemeteries will continue. Services that will be paused include Veterans Career Counseling or Transition Assistance Programs. And the VA will not permanently place headstones or maintain the grounds at National Cemeteries. As you drive down some of Billings' busiest streets, you'll notice something's changed with the way new businesses are popping up. It's all part of the city's mission to adopt new building codes, which we're starting to see now come to life in some areas of town. And as I found out, while safety is at the center of these changes, some still have concerns. On busy Grand Avenue. It's a change and it's something new. At 16th Street. Grand Avenue is a super busy corridor. Cars go rushing by. And that's where city planning director Wyatt Friday stands. He says feeling the traffic is exactly the point. And we can see it and hear it. They're right here. City leaders so, have been yeah. busy fine-tuning and tweaking new commercial zoning codes since 2021. So new commercial businesses, um, the buildings are actually required to be closer to the street um, and also have parking either on the side or the rear. This new city brew on Grand Avenue was built under those new codes, as well as several buildings on King Avenue and on 24th. So far, roughly 10 have been built this new way. Well, the idea there is to help both bring the, the buildings up to create a different feel for the street corridor, uh, both from a vehicle standpoint, in terms of speeds, making it feel a little bit slower, a little bit, you know, buildings closer in. Friday says by moving buildings closer to traffic, it would inevitably slow down cars, reduce signage, and make pedestrians feel safer. Uh, feeling like, oh, it's a little bit tighter here. I'm not gonna feel quite as comfortable to go, you know, that extra speed. But Councillor Pam Puritan says the design isn't sustainable. Some of the plans that are put out there, I don't think they're practical. And I think we need to come from a more practical center. She says these new codes end up costing developers more in the long run. The more regulations, the more it's going to cost. And that's what you want to try to keep down whether it's residential or commercial. The hope is to create a safer feel for a busy road. So yeah, that's that's part of the long term goal. But it will take years before planners say we'll see hectic streets like Grand look any different. A district court judge in Helena has agreed to delay a new state law that would require abortion clinics to be licensed by the state. The law was set to take effect this coming Sunday. Judge Chris Abbott granted a temporary restraining order requiring, requiring the Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services to establish rules for clinics and issue licenses. However, the department hasn't yet come out with those rules. Two Montana clinics sued, saying they're in a state of legal uncertainty over whether they can continue to operate once the law takes effect. Abbott says the state acknowledges it's difficult to enforce the law until rules are in place. He set a hearing October 30th on a possible longer term injunction. Still to come on the 430 News here on Q2, as higher education becomes even more expensive, we dive into the issue of loan forgiveness. Some might be eligible and there are ways to learn if you are. That and more stories are coming up next. We'll see you soon.